Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Wednesday afternoon. I'm in the office, about to break out of here and go get some dinner. Let's talk about approach anxiety. That's a thing. It's a syndrome. Some people suffer from it. Some people don't. Some people have it in certain areas, but not in others. That's kind of me. I don't have approach anxiety when I'm going to promote myself for business. I can approach anyone with a business card in my hand, shake hands, talk about what I do for a living, my business, my company. I can do this relentlessly, fearlessly, anywhere, anytime, and I'm very good at it. However, you get me trying to approach a woman, some beautiful single woman, and I might be very timid. So I've learned some lessons in this, and this goes for any scenario, whether you're trying to meet a woman, be social and meet friends, to network in any way, or to promote your business. Approach anxiety is really just something that you can conquer by, by doing it. So, there's a couple rules, and we'll go over them. The first rule is that you don't wait for a choosing signal. Now, I'll just put it in the context of business. When I'm going to promote my business, I don't wait for choosing signals. A choosing signal is a signal that someone sends to pre-select you. So with the social world, with, with dating, for example, you see a pretty girl at the gym or at a bar, a choosing signal might be she smiles at you, she bats her eyelash and flicks her hair and kind of, you know, get, gets into some sexy position or something. She would send some little cue to let you know I'm interested. A smile is a, is a good traditional choosing signal. But here's the rule. We don't wait for choosing signals. A high-valued man doesn't wait for a choosing signal. He goes after what he wants. So when I'm going to promote myself, just going back to the business model for a second, because that's what I'm really good at, I don't wait for choosing signals. When I was talking with Arlen Ness and his son Corey Ness at the, out at the track, the racetrack here in Daytona Beach during bike weeks years ago. This is when Arlen Ness was still alive, rest in peace. I practically jumped those guys. <laughs> they were walking from their tent across the little aisle way because they set the, these, the vendor tents up in aisles and if you've ever been to a motorcycle rally you can kind of walk aisle to aisle and there's different booths set up. So they're walking from their booth out the back of their booth through the aisle into the uh, tent on the other side which was like a hangout tent that had food and whatever but it was by it was owned by Yamaha but they had uh, TVs and tables and a little cafe set up so they were just gonna go get a drink or whatever they were gonna do I jumped in front of them business card in hand basically accosted them both handshakes smiles next thing you know within five seconds one Mississippi two Mississippi within five seconds were basically just yucking it up, chatting like friends. We're all buddies. We're talking about doing business. They said we're going to go get some uh, something to drink and get out of the heat. You want to come with us? Of course I want to come with you. You're Arlen Nash. You're my fucking hero. I didn't say that. But I can do that anywhere with anyone. And I have. I have hundreds of stories of just relentlessly going after people in the motorcycle industry in order to make deals with them and successfully make the deals. And all it took was my initiative. They were not paying attention to me. They were not sending signals. Oh, look at him. He looks pretty cool. I wonder if he's a biker. <laughs> well, look, his t-shirt looks cool. They, they're ignoring me. I don't exist. I'm an invisible, non-existent person. 
who just came up to him and tapped him on the shoulder or jump in front of him. Hey, how you doing? I'll do that shit anywhere. So that's the way to be. Now, it doesn't mean that you're rude. When I approached, say, for example, going back to the Arlen Ness story, I was very nice to him and his son. I wasn't crazy or weird, or, you know. But I was absolutely relentless in my mission. And I wasn't looking for approval or validation or an invite. So go after what you want. If you see a woman across a room, at the grocery store, wherever you see her, the rule is, is that you don't wait for a choosing signal. A sucker would. A simp would. Because a simp would wait for her to pre-select him. I'm just going back to the business model again, because that's what I'm good at. I don't wait for potential customers or associates to pre-select me. <laughs> I select you. I want you. I want to do business with you. Another rule with this, with approach anxiety, because that's what we're talking about, how to get over approach anxiety, is to remember that most people, whether it be in business or in the social world, most people are intimidated by confident, good-looking, well-put-together, high-valued men. And if you have all of that, then you're absolutely intimidating everywhere you go, and you need to know this. If you have elements of that, well, you might be just a little bit of good looking and a little bit successful. You have just elements. We all have little elements of these things. You're absolutely intimidating to women or to potential contacts. You may go to a networking event, and everybody's just kind of sitting there not really talking. Or they may not be talking to you. Oh, it's not personal. Nobody hates you. They may be scared of you. Because you're a good-looking, successful dude. So it's on you. And to realize that they're more afraid of me than I am of them is important. When you're growing up, it's important to learn this about bullies. It's important to learn this about socialization. We teach kids this. So remind yourself this. You may be scared to go into a meeting, but they may be intimidated as they're sitting there in that meeting room waiting for you to come in. Who is this guy? And what's he all about? No, oh, I've heard things. Or you, you don't know what their world is. So that's your advantage. Use that to your advantage. That should take some of the fear out, give you some courage. But you're not the, the weak one. You both are in the same position. You both are like kids at a prom. If you've ever been to a prom, like they usually end up real happening. But they start off the beginning of a prom. People are on the boys are on one side, the girls are on the other side, and everybody's kind of intimidated. Intimidated to socialize. And it takes this icebreaker, and usually the icebreaker is some confident kids that go and start dancing together and then other people join in. You need to learn to break through that fear with your courage. This is why jumping into cold water is a good practice. It's all food for thought.